Hey all, I hope you all are doing really well and welcome once again to my channel. I have come back with another video on AWS. So my topic of discussion today is basically a continuation of the previous video. As I mentioned earlier, it's a deployment package basically comprises of two types. One is a zip archive file that you can upload. And the second part is basically a utilization of a container image. What I am specifically going to discuss uh, in this video is about Lambda layers. So you can ask that what's the difference between a lambda layer and a deployment package in my previous video i have described that a bit but uh today let's dive deep deeper into what layer is so as per the public documentation you will find it's basically an archive file so comp comprising of certain additional code or data so it can also comprise of any library dependencies which is actually required by your function code to run properly any custom runtimes any configuration files or any framework that you are using and you want that to be distributed across multiple functions so multiple function basically utilize a single layer can be utilized across them so what are the reasons and constructs you basically require so when you want to separate the business logic and your additional packages or dependencies so in that way whenever you are updating your function you only change the minimal code which is basically your business logic that you have implemented okay and uh, when and this also gives you an opportunity to reduce your deployment packet size and as i mentioned basically separation of your code function uh, business logic from the dependencies and to share dependencies across multiple function and uh, you can actually edit your code from the code editor of the web console so these are multiple reasons why you must why uh, you can consider shifting using layers in your code so just a heads up here altogether the limit of the total deployment package after unzipping uh, the service will look into it and it has to be within 250 mb for a zip archive file so that means your function code that is your business logic along with the additional dependencies that you are using uploading as a part of the deployment package or as a layer it has to be within 250 mb in case you are going proceeding with zip archive file but if you are proceeding with container images the limit is 10 gb okay now let us quickly uh, check through the diagrammatic approach here so here is a function one that doesn't uh, function one and two which doesn't use any layers so their deployment package would comprise of the business logic and along with that the code dependencies or any custom runtimes or configuration files same goes for function 2 if we can find a mechanism in order to reduce this repetitive task of uploading these common dependencies so that can be done with the help of a layer we can merge those dependencies custom runtimes configuration files environment variables etc whatever you are using then it can be utilized with the help of lambda layers okay so whenever you upload it a lambda layer and associated with your function the service what it does in the opt directory of the execution environment of the function it extracts the layer contents so basically whatever code you are uploading as a part of layer would be accessible from the slash opt directory in this video i'm going to show you a simple uh, python example function with python runtime so i'm going to utilize uh, pymysql which has a library package in order to install it in order to use uh, that package as a layer for my function so I will proceed here, click on create function. First of all, I would do what is change the runtime. And let me give a meaningful name. Say test by my SQL. Okay. And if I scroll down here, I will let uh, the function, let the service create a new role with basic permission. So it, it's going to push the logs. It's going to create the logs group create log stream and push events to the, those log stream. I will simply go ahead and create the function. Now the function creation is completed. Now you can see here it, it generally provides you with the basic hello world configuration quite similar to that a simple code snippet that returns a status code and a body. So next I'm going to 
open a cloud shell instance so cloud shell it basically provides you the it's a web-based shell that is provided by this cloud provider so it's basically helps you with multiple scenarios where you want to utilize possibly the cli command let us quickly make a directory layer demo let me go inside this layer demo folder and once i'm in so in case of python what you have to do is uh, let me show you here for your references so for packaging layer so depending upon the runtime that you are using so different folder names needs to be created so for python it's basically the structure is slash opt slash python so you do not need to create a directory for opt so this opt directory would be present in the execution environment but what we are going to do here is so either we we, are, we will create this python folder or depending upon the version that you are using python version you can create multiple site packages site directories depending upon that you can provide the layer code before proceeding i will just check the my pip3 version let me create a python folder let me go inside and pip3 install so what i'm going to use this install this package it's basically the mysql driver folder driver package that helps you connect your python code to the database that you want to connect to so these are the supported versions like uh, depending upon the python versions there are certain requirements you can check the for the installation steps i will do here is pip install by my sql and with the hyphen t dot means i want the packages to be installed here so all the packages are installed successfully so you can see here inside this by mysql has been added i will come one step out of this and i will ensure that chmod r let me check change the permission privileges of all these file in order to ensure the lambda is able to successfully extract these files i will create the pymysql.zip file and the contains gonna be python okay yeah python uh, pymysql.zip would comprise of python folder and along with the dependency modules so now open an s3 bucket because i want to upload this file to a bucket available let me check the available bucket here in this case where i can upload lambuck 12300 is an s3 bucket that i have and let me push that so the command correspondingly would be aws s3 cp by my sql dot zip s3 colon double slash so as you can see that it has been uploaded successfully i will go to this lambda 123 folder i will copy the object url on the hamburger icon if you click click on and we get a layers so here let us quickly create layer so alternately you can actually utilize cli commands to create those stuffs but uh, for your guidance i'm just creating it over here by my sql upload a file from s3 let me just simply paste it okay so you can select a compatible architecture so depending upon the lambda uh, instruction set architecture you're using you can select one of them and compatible runtime that i'm going to um, i want this layer to be compatible with is 3.11 since that is what i'm using and let me create it okay uh, there is an issue with this bucket so my bucket has been created was created in us east one so instead of uploading it to a bucket in us east one so i have to create a bucket in my current region which is mumbai region so let me check for other available buckets so i think this is one bucket that i can utilize for uploading okay let me copy it let me once again instantiate the cloud shell command okay and let me just paste it over here okay so it has been loaded successfully and let me open this bucket and i can see my file has been uh, the zip file has been uploaded so i will once again copy this uh, url and i will go to here and let me paste it by my sql.zip and i will create so you can see that my mysql version 1 has been created so this is the version 1 of the, the layer
and from here you can see that which all functions uh, this layer is associated with so in case you want to associate this with the a specific function you again need to go to this functions select this either either here you can click on the layers symbol or you can scroll down here just click on add a layer so there are certain by default aws layers that are available i'm going to go ahead with the custom layers so in case your layer belongs to some different accounts you also need to ensure that there are proper permissions that you are allowing other accounts to access that and this is basically the third option so i will now select my layer so i have successfully added the layer changes that i would do i would import by my sql and simply i will be printing the version let's deploy the change once that is done i would be configuring the event invocation of my function let me try to invoke it you will see that the version of pymysql installed is 1.4.6 so you can utilize this pymysql to connect any other database that you uh, have any mysql database that you want to connect uh, in case you want to see that what are the folder structure and what are the contents so i will see just simply uh, click on uh, just import the os module and i can simply print the content of the the layer packages would be deployed in this path okay and now let me print it you can see that the same layer content is available in the slash opt slash python directory just to summarize what we have learned today we have uh, basically created a lambda layer of pymysql and i have associated it with my function and i have tested that how you can uh, create a layer and associate with, the, with your function and utilize it as per your requirement so i hope you all like this video please feel free to like share and subscribe i will be back soon with another exciting video shortly so see you guys for now have a great day ahead cheers